Welcome back, Trailblazers. I'm Nagana Kuchpudi. And I'm Daniel Price. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Vanguard News. On today's show, we will highlight breast cancer awareness, review the state fair, and much more. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and students and staff throughout the district are making concerted efforts to contribute to the fight against the disease. Blakely Jameson had the opportunity to speak to LT Campus Secretary and breast cancer survivor Holly Sherman and learn about her journey and how it changed her life and how she inspired others. The odds of being diagnosed with breast cancer around the age of 60 is 13%. Very few women are diagnosed under the age of 45. Including those still being treated, there are more than 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the United States. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in February of 2018, and I found out after going in for my very first mammogram ever. The most difficult part of the journey for that, um, for me, was going through the radiation, honestly. Like, the surgery and the recovery from the surgery was hard, but the radiation was definitely the hardest part of it. I would say, it's very cliche, but it has definitely made me um, more thankful for every day that I get to be here and spend with my family. Um, and it's just made me appreciate life more for sure. If you have a family member that has breast cancer that you're trying to support, take their lead on how they're dealing with it. Um, maybe they need a shoulder to cry on. Um, maybe they just need you to act like life is normal. So I would say just, um, follow the lead of your loved one and how they're dealing with it and go from there. Students are preparing for the upcoming Pink Out football game on October 21st by buying Pink Out shirts to show their support for the battle against breast cancer. These Pink Out shirts are available throughout the campus by scanning the QR codes in the hallways. I'm Blakely Jamison reporting for Vanguard TV. The State Fair of Texas has been an annual tradition since 1886, attracting people from throughout the state with its various entertainment options and unique food selections. Dean Saiju has more on why this local event is loved by so many. While one of the most recognizable features of the fair is Big Tex, a 55-foot tall cowboy greeting attendees, what many fairgoers also look forward to each year are the different food recipes. Each year, the fair brings in 70 small businesses from throughout Texas to showcase their individual offerings. This year's menu includes deep-fried honey, pickle pizza, and deep-fried southern dessert dumplings. One food that I'm looking forward to is cotton candy, specifically the pink one. It'll probably either have to be corn dogs or cotton candy. Something I'm looking forward to at the state fair is the corn dogs and turkey legs, because I feel like those are like classic state fair foods. My favorite classic state fair food that would have to be funnel cake. I just tried it recently and it was really good. Classic is probably corn dogs, like the big long corn dogs, those are good. Whether individuals go for the food, the attractions, or the people watching, the State Fair of Texas continues to be a staple in the lives of many residents. I'm Dean Sainju, reporting for Vanguard TV. One of Lebanon Trail's main goals is to provide students more opportunities to grow their passions early on and gain experience in their chosen career paths. At LT, there are a variety of computer courses available, including AP and Advanced Computer Science, which provides a foundation for students who are interested in the technology field. Faith Alores has more on this course, benefits, and how it benefits students in their high school and future careers. The computer courses that are offered at LTHS are resourceful for students regarding their future careers and goals in the IT field. In this course, we learn about the Java language and its basics, and we apply it in coding. Though this class requires time and commitment, students enrolled in computer science recognize that there are significant advantages. You can do AP CompSite A after this. Computer science is a very good career to do when you grow up. There are no disadvantages. Yeah, the course is cracked. Our wonderful teacher, Ms. Bonnet, she's great. She, like, without her, I would be like good at coding. I'd be lost. Along with helping students gain insight about the different technology careers available to them, this class also helps students in their current daily lifestyles. If you start to get just a basic understanding of computer science and programming, it can come in helpful, even if you're not doing a job that's like strictly about creating software or anything. So besides, it's fun <laughs> is it also sharpens your pro your problem solving skills just overall which is going to help you in any class you take no matter what you major in um, that's always a good thing to have 
But like, I guess this course can set up a good foundation for someone who's planning to do like a computer science major. Like, I guess I would probably recommend them taking the course. The core topics addressed in this course, including basic coding skills and reasoning with logic, are specific qualities that companies such as Microsoft and Apple look for in future employees. As students at LT obtain these skills while still in high school, they are further preparing themselves for growth and success in the IT industry. I'm Faith Alouris, reporting for Vanguard TV. Halloween is quickly approaching, which means the Frisco community is preparing for this holiday through a variety of decorations, including plenty of pumpkins. Tom V. Maddy provides information regarding how students can enjoy fall festivities at one of the city's most popular pumpkin patches. We're getting closer to Halloween and students are getting into the spirit. Many students have purchased pumpkins for carving and display. This is Pumpkins on the Prairie, a popular pumpkin patch here in the DFW area. It opened in 1999 and has rose in popularity since then. Many members of the Frisco community come to Pumpkins on the Prairie to get their pumpkins for Halloween. In fact, if you went to an elementary here, you may have already visited the patch for a school trip. At the patch, they offer hay rides, mazes, games, and of course, pumpkins. Here at Pumpkins on the Prairie, all of the proceeds go to founding mission trips where members visit foreign countries and do charitable work. If you're looking for somewhere to go this Halloween, maybe consider the Pumpkins on the Prairie Patch at 3521 Main Street. I'm Tom V. Maddie with Vanguard News. LTHS athletes are currently competing in ongoing and upcoming district competitions. Ethan Rue highlights the achievements of LT fall sports teams. <laughs> Fall season is coming closer to its end as multiple teams progress into regional competitions and final games. After falling to Reedy High School 55 to 29 a week prior, football lost 55 to 14 against Lone Star last week. The football team has three games remaining for the season and will play against Wakeland at the Ford Center this Friday at 7 p.m. After sustaining a leg injury a few weeks prior, LT volleyball team captain Simone Sims returns to the courts ready for the final district games. The volleyball notched wins against Emerson, Heritage, and most recently Memorial with a final score of 3-0. The Blazers are currently third in district play with a 7-2 record. Volleyball will take on Centennial for its third game until playoffs in the LT main gyms at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. Tennis concluded its district play after defeating Memorial for its senior night on October 5th and moved on to district and area games. The Blazers beat Frisco High School for the bi-district title on October 12th and Woodrow Wilson for the area title on October 13th, both with final scores of 10-0. This marks the sixth year in a row that tennis has been area champions. Congratulations to Coach Dawson, Coach Latham, and the Blazer tennis players. Cross country ended the District 10 5A meet with both boys and girls finishing second and qualifying for regionals. Naraj Kulkarni and Nyla Karim both qualified for regionals as individuals placing first and seventh at their respective divisions. This is the first time in Lebanon Trail history that both teams have qualified for regionals while an individual runner earned the district champion title. Congratulations to Coach Johnson, Coach House, and the cross country runners. The Blazers will head off to regionals on October 25th at 7.30 a.m. at the Lynn Creek Park at Joel Pool Lake in Grand Prairie. I'm Ethan Wu reporting for Vanguard News. Thank you for watching Vanguard News. I'm Megan Kuchfuding. And I'm Daniel Price. Blaze it, Trailblazers.